Hello, everybody. Daniel Rothamel here again. Thank you for joining me in the DevOps Lair. Uh, we've got another screencast. So I know it's been a little while, um, but on this screencast, we're going to talk about what you see here around me. This is GitLab. Um, GitLab is obviously um, a Git service, um, Git software platform that's really designed for DevOps. And so unlike some of the other ones that uh, were designed before DevOps and then tried to integrate, GitLab has really been designed from the ground up um, for the DevOps process. So what we're going to do with GitLab, and I'll sort of explain how that works as I go along here. What we're going to do with GitLab is we're going to use a service called GitLab Pages to host just a plain, simple, static um, HTML website. So it's pretty cool that you can do that with GitLab. Um, and you can even use different page builders. They have support for different page builders. If you want to host a website on there and like do more elaborate stuff, you can even change DNS to have custom domain, all those things. We're not going to go through that. I'm just going to show you how to basically get up a static um, HTML page. All right, so the first thing you're going to have to do is uh, you're going to have to have a GitLab account. Um, so, you know, you can go up here and you can get a free trial. I'm on the free account. Um, so, you know, it's just like the other, uh, Git services. Um, you, you can have, you can use it for free. Now, one thing that is cool, GitLab allows you to have as many, I'm pretty sure they allow you to have unlimited, uh, private repositories for free, which is cool. Um, so I'm going to log in, uh, doop, doop. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we have to create a project. So, you know, if you're familiar with GitHub where you create a repository on GitLab, it's a little bit different. You create projects and within that project, you can have repositories. So it's sort of like a level above. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a project. And we're going to create a blank project. Now you can do, they have project templates for websites using their pages service. But we're going to do a blank project. So I'm going to name this. You can see here in my drop down menu, I've done this a few times and it hasn't worked out. That's why I have all these different project names. And I'll talk about the errors that I ran into um, in just a second. But we're going to call this um, pages test. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at that. That was one of the ones I used. All right, pages test. So you can see it gives you a project URL, and the description is optional, but we're going to say um, this is a test of GitLab pages. All right, we're going to make this public. Um, you can, just like on like GitHub, you can initialize this with a, a readme file uh, in the beginning. I mean, that's fine. I don't need it, but I like that. Um, so we're going to do that, and it's going to create the project. Now, what we need in order to have a static website on hosted by uh, GitLab pages is two things. One, we need the HTML code, obviously, for the web page. And then we need a configuration file for GitLab that will tell it to build our page. So let me show you how this works. So first, we're going to come up here. So you can see over here, the, uh, here's the menu over here with the different options. And you'll see one of the things that makes GitLab different is right here, the CICD option um, and configuration um, for pipelines. Because that's the way that GitLab works. Because it's a DevOps-based platform, it relies on CICD pipelines. So that's continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment, um, depending on what you're doing. Um, so, you know, you'll, we'll see how that works here in just a second. That's what our configuration file is for. But first, we need that static HTML file. So we're going to create, we're going to hear plus, we're going to create a new file. We're going to call this file index.html because that's what you call your web page file, your HTML file. And then I just, uh, this is from like learnhtml.org. I mean, we're not going to get crazy here. I don't actually know HTML, so we're just going to put that in. We'll change this, right? Hello world, because I love to be cliche. And then we can say, um, we'll say this page is being served by GitLab 
pages. All right. So there we have our um, there we have our HTML. Okay. Now, so because this is Git based, so we need a commit message. So we're gonna say added index.html. The target branch is obviously main because we only have one branch, and we're going to commit those changes. Okay, so now if I go back in my repository, you can see we've got the readme and our index.html, and it recognizes that it's HTML there. Now, so the next thing we need is that configuration file that I talked about. So we're gonna create a new file, and every GitLab configuration file has the same name. It's .gitlab hyphen ci dot yaml yml because gitlab uses yaml for their configuration files now where are we going to get this file from now configuration files on gitlab can be pretty you know um they can be pretty complex if you want them to be if you're you know depending on what you're doing this is obviously going to be a very simple one luckily gitlab has for us um on their documentation um, how to use Git, how to set up GitLab pages. So if you go to about.gitlab.com, you can see hosting a GitLab.com with GitLab pages. Now, let me point this out. This documentation is from 2016. That's five years ago, which is basically a century in IT tools. So, um, you know, this isn't the most accurate documentation in the world. And we'll sh I'll show you why that's a problem here in just a second. But we're gonna scroll down to adding a configuration file. And so this is a GitLab continuous integration CI for plain HTML websites. So that's what we need. So we're gonna copy this. And then I'll, I'll talk about what it does here in just a second. You can see they also have configuration files for um, static site generators like Jekyll um, and then uh, Hexo. So they have support for, you know, other, for other popular page builders. Um, so let's go back. We're going to paste in this code. This is what the YAML file does, right? So it's telling, it's going to run when we commit it. It's telling GitLab to use pages to deploy um, our code. What it's gonna do is it's gonna run these scripts. It's gonna make a directory that's private called public. Then it's gonna copy, so you can see copy recursively, everything that we've committed, which in our case is just the HTML file, to that private folder, public. Then it's gonna move the private folder into a visible folder called public. And then all the artifacts that are built are going to be in, the path is going to be in that public folder and only is for when we want to run this pipeline. This is where outdated documentation is not helpful because here you can see the GitLab documentation has only as the branch as master. However, that was 2016. It's now 2021. And Git programs don't use, Git doesn't use the term master anymore. We use the term main. So GitLab uses the term main. So we need to change this to say main. And this was driving me crazy because when I was using this file, this configuration file, I kept getting errors. And the reason why is because the configuration file had the branch as master, but the branch is actually called main. And shout out to my fellow Level Up and Tech teammate, James, who figured this out and helped me get through this. So he's the one that figured out we had to change this to get it to work correctly. So that's what we've done. We're changing that to main. So here's our configuration file. We can uh, go down and we need a commit message. So we're gonna say added CI config file. And then we're going to commit those changes. Now, when we do that, because we have this configuration file now, and every time there's a commitment on main, it's going to run. If we go here to CICD, we can see what pipelines are running. And here is the pipeline configuration that we just set up. Here, you can see that it's running. So it has the pipeline ID, and then the commit, the specific commit, 
which is here's the commit ID, and here's our message, the added the CI config file. This is the specific commit that caused, that triggered the run of our pipeline. And you can see this one ran really quick. So it only took 15 seconds. I mean, it's super simple, so it makes sense. It only took 15 seconds, and it passed, and it the, the deployment passed. Now, if you have an error, like I did with your configuration file, you'll get red X's here. Um, and when you click on the red X, you know, it'll show you uh, what you know, what failed. In my case, it was failing at the build stage because of my bad configuration file. But when you click on that, you get more information. You get to see the actual log of uh, the pipeline being run. So you can see running with GitLab runner and it has the runner. And then it tells you all the things. It gives you a log of everything um, that it did. So here you can see, here's where it ran the, the scripts, uh, creating the directory, copying everything into the directory, renaming the directory, and uploaded the artifacts. Everything is good. At the end, it says job succeeded. That's exactly what we want to see. So now that we know this has run successfully, how do we see it? Where is it at? Um, so the default, if you use pages, the default for um, the URL is simply your GitLab username. So in my case, it's drothamel, dot .gitlab, dot .io, and in my case, it's pages test because that's the name of the repository. You remember the URL of the repository um, is pages hyphen test because that was the name. So if we visit that, we see right here, this page is being served by GitLab pages. That's the HTML that we uploaded and that's what GitLab pages is serving. So that's it. That is how you can use GitLab pages to host a very simple static HTML website. Like I said, they have support for other page builders. You can check out that. They've got templates, all kinds of cool stuff. But GitLab is really cool. Um, and it is really a Git platform that is designed to support DevOps, which is really neat. Um, so I definitely recommend you know learning more about GitLab and seeing if maybe that's a way, um, a better alternative for you, depending on you know what you need to do for your DevOps workloads. So thanks for joining me on this screencast and uh, stay tuned, there will be more to come. But until next time, everybody take it easy.